We live at a time in which most of the energy of the universe is produced by stars. Trillions of years from now, all across the universe, stars begin to use up their fuel and fade away. The largest stars fall toward the centers of galaxies, where they're swallowed by supermassive black holes. As the universe decays, it gives way to a long era dominated by the remnants of dying stars and black holes. The far future of the universe is one where the stars are burnt out and formed neutron stars or white dwarfs and some black holes. And eventually, over long periods of time, the black holes merge together to form bigger black holes. In time, much of the matter within galaxies will fall into these black holes and they will become the last bastions of our universe. How long will they last? The answer may come from a theory proposed by the cosmologist Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking applied quantum physics to black holes and predicted that they wouldn't be black but would glow with heat radiation in a very distinctive way. And of course, uh, if there's heat uh, coming off, heat energy coming off, this energy has to come from somewhere. The energy, Hawking said, would come from tiny particles emerging from the vacuum of space just outside the event horizon. Some of those particles radiate away, taking minute amounts of mass from the black hole, like water evaporating from the ocean. Over time, the radiation grows stronger and stronger as the black hole shrinks and finally explodes. When the last black hole dies, that's the end of the universe as we know it. How can we know if the theory is right and they actually do decay? If black holes were made in the Big Bang with a mass of about that of Mount Everest, uh, these black holes ought to be going pop about now, and radio astronomers have looked to see if they can see a sort of electromagnetic pulse associated with that, they haven't found any. There might be other ways to see a black hole decay. From all across space, black hole jets are blasting particles out at very near the speed of light. These particles, called cosmic rays, slam into our Earth's atmosphere with enough energy to create miniature black holes. These mini monsters would decay immediately in a shower of particles, but they are very difficult to observe. We're the almost the store. Hmm? The emittances look good. Okay. What if you could produce collisions this powerful in an Earth-bound lab and under controlled conditions actually create a black hole. All right, so let's go ahead if you could then watch it decay, it would provide a unique window onto the future of black holes. Okay, filling blue. So we'll start collimating in blue ring. It's hoped that taking two very high energy small pieces of a very fast proton and colliding them with each other, you can put enough energy into a small enough space that you can actually create the conditions by which a black hole would form. These black holes are supposed to be very small, therefore very hot, and therefore they essentially radiate themselves away immediately. 1.2, 1 1.3, <laughs> 10 to the 9. Barbecue is still locked, feedback okay. looks good. All right, here we go. At Brookhaven National Lab in New York State, physicists are using advanced technology to blast gold atoms in opposite directions down giant tunnels almost two and a half miles long. They accelerate these atoms to within a tiny fraction of the speed of light. When the atoms collide, a fireball erupts. Sophisticated sensors record a splatter of subatomic particles, a hot soup of gluons and quarks. 
what we believe we're creating is a temperature is approaching 2 trillion degrees centigrade. That's 100,000 times hotter than the interior of the sun. It's hotter than a supernova explosion. It's hotter than the surface of a black hole. It's hotter than a neutron star. In fact, we believe nowhere in the universe is at that temperature. It was last that temperature in the universe, one microsecond, one millionth of a second after the Big Bang. It's as if they are running the universe in reverse, taking us back to an instant when it was extremely hot and dense. Creating a black hole, it seems, will take even more energy than that. In fact, more than any Earth-bound collider can pack. That is, unless there's more to our universe and to gravity than we've thought. Our injection efficiency looks good. The orbit looks good. Orbit RMS is under two millimeters in each plane. Einstein's theory of general relativity is the one that we find in all the textbooks, and it's the one that we're all sort of pledged to defend, but uh, it would be rash to say it's the last word on the subject of gravitation. And there are certainly alternative theories around, and some of them are quite popular. And some of these theories, these are non-standard theories of gravitation, predict uh, that you could make a black hole by colliding together subatomic particles. Some scientists believe they may be able to create one at a new and more powerful system in Europe called the Large Hadron Collider. The key lies in whether the world we know is part of a more complex cosmic reality beyond the three spatial dimensions plus time that we experience in our everyday lives. If so, we would be like insects living on the two-dimensional surface of a pond, unaware of the deep and complex reality below it. That we can be living on the surface of the pond, happily minding our own business, but not realizing that under, underwater, something, say a fish underwater, could be swimming, swimming through, through the water, causing disturbances that propagate up to where we are, we could feel it happening, we could essentially see our universe around us changing, but we look around for the cause of it and we won't know what it is. The idea is that a number of extra dimensions actually intersect our world. 10, 12 pi. Okay. When particles collide at very high energies, those extra dimensions enhance the gravitational force between the particles, enough to create a micro black hole. Let's look good. The scientists will know a black hole is there when they see the shower of particles predicted by Hawking's theory. And for a moment, that will open a window to a deeper cosmic reality. The very idea that we could tap into this underlying realm shows how rich black hole research has become. Einstein's theory showed how black holes can generate extreme energies, cause the universe to wobble and bend and twist up into knots. The recognition that black holes are fundamental to the workings of our universe is a major discovery of science in our time. And if it turns out that they do have a finite lifetime, their death will signal the end of our universe. By some estimates, the time horizon of the largest black holes goes out to a Google years. Take a one and add 100 zeros to it. That's an unfathomable spread of time, but it's far short of forever. The clock may well be ticking on our universe. The alarm will sound when the last black hole explodes.